Good morning and welcome to Chapel at Community Missions, our midweek uh, Wednesday service. Um, I'm Reverend Mark Brees. Um, I apologize for the headset -y thing. Uh, my other microphone just did not uh, uh, work out. <coughs> so um, hopefully um, this will uh, um, sound all right for you and have a chance to test it. All right, so enough of that. Um, again, it's our weekly midweek chapel service. Um, our uh, call to worship <coughs> this morning uh, comes from uh, the Psalms, and it's from Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory is his holy name. <clears throat> Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Amen. Um, <clears throat> and I guess I will also offer the apology about my voice. Still, still struggling with this for uh, a bit here. Hopefully, we'll get it sorted out soon. So please bear with me. Uh, we're coming up, and we'll have our first hymn for the morning. Uh, that Joanne Lorenzo is uh, again providing, and um, just that reminder that if you are uh, on your own uh, at home or someplace, feel free to uh, sing out loud. Uh, if you're with your uh, family group that you usually are in your bubble with, uh, also uh, probably okay to sing. Um, you know your specific situation, but if you are in a uh, um, if you are in a uh, situation where you are in a uh, public space or meeting or something like that, where you're all watching this together with people that aren't part of your family group, please remember that uh, uh, singing is not a great, not a particularly great idea right now. So you can follow along uh, with the words um, and the music that Joanne will provide. So, without any further nonsense, uh, here's our first hymn of the morning. Amen. Thank you for uh, that music again uh, from Joanne Lorenzo. So, um, 
as we uh, continue in worship, we come to our uh, time of prayer. And um, um, as we've been uh, doing all along, just to continue to ask for prayers for uh, uh, people who are sick, uh, for people who are treating the ill, for people who are in isolation um, around the illness, whether it's uh, COVID or from uh, other illnesses. Um, and uh, we ask that you, uh, we're going to ask that uh, in your prayers today, I'm going to ask that you have a, a real uh, heart and mind for the specific people in your life and the things that um, uh, they may experience and that may need God's special presence. Um, you know who that is and who they are. And so, um, you know, I hope that you will uh, take um, this time to, to pray for those special things. Um, and of course, we need to lift up our thanksgivings as well, uh, because God is so good and gracious to us all the time. Uh, and um, uh, it's important that we thank God for all um, that we get uh, from God's uh, endless blessings, um, especially that blessing of God's presence with us each day. So as we begin our prayer together, uh, bring all these things into your heart and mind uh, and uh, uh, turn them over uh, to God. Amen. So, um, as we continue this uh, uh, day of worship, uh, we come to our uh, text for the day, and it is from Matthew chapter 14, and it's verses 22 through 33, with uh, Jesus walking on the water. And so let's see our text today. So, Matthew 14, beginning at verse 22. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowd, crowds, he went up into the mountains by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. <clears throat> and early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are truly the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. So, uh, there we have our text for the day, that very, very, very uh, familiar uh, story, uh, that story of uh, Jesus um, uh, being with the disciples uh, in uh, sending them away and then walking to them on the water. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. Um, the gospel writers um, definitely um, make much of this moment. It's in Mark, Matthew, and the Gospel of John. Um, and um, it's kind of interesting what they are 
uh, they each have their kind of own agenda in the way this story is used. In in Mark, uh, you know, everything is about how much the disciples uh, doubt, um, and um, uh, that they didn't quite get everything. Like they were scared um, by what happened to Jesus <coughs> walking on the water. Um, they didn't have faith at all, it seems. And the Gospels mark the disciples are always kind of just, eh, they're just kind of there and bumbling along. Um, in Matthew, uh, he has a slightly better view. They're, they are in the process of learning and living faith. And so that's what we need to be looking at today in terms of how uh, we will get, um, uh, how we can get to understanding this passage for us. Um, one of the things that I like to uh, think about or talk about with this, uh, when we're looking at this passage, um, is about uh, a, an old fishing story of mine. It's actually a kind of like a boating story. Uh, in the uh, lake where I grew up uh, in North Brunswick, there's a lake called Farrington Lake, uh, just up the road from it, you know, about a half mile, and would be there pretty much every day during the summer uh, in some way or other uh, on the lake, fishing either in a boat or along the side or swimming or doing something. It's something will always happen in for me down at the lake there. But there's this one day where um, I was uh, out in the uh, our rowboat that we had, um, and it was a cloudy day, and it was going to rain. Um, and... Uh, um, I decided that, you know, I was kind of done, so I was bringing the boat to shore. I wanted to sort of miss the rain. Um, and I had a place I docked it, and then I walked through the woods to my grandmother's house, which was nearby, and then called my dad, and he came and got the boat with me, and, and you know, we made those arrangements that way. Well, to make a very long story short, when I decided I was going to go in, the winds were picking up, because it wasn't a cloudy day, and rain was coming, and there just started to be a lot of wind. And our... Uh, the rowboat we had is not one that had a pointy front. It's a John boat, so it's got a flat front with a little s raised up sort of scoopy thing underneath, you know, and then a flat back. Um, and uh, so you can't sort of like point it into the wind and have the bow of the boat sort of, you know, cut through the wind. Um, it's just a big sail. The boat's just this, this John boat, <laughs> so it's just a big sail. And try as I might, the wind was so strong, I just kept getting blown and blown away and didn't make it to the usual pickup place. I, I eventually let it uh, blow me up in another spot entirely, and I beached the boat and had to walk like for almost an hour and a half in the rain to get to my grandmother's <coughs> to uh, have her call and have uh, come, my dad come and retrieve me. Sometimes the wind can really be a problem with a boat if you don't have enough horsepower in an engine or in your arms if you're rowing to sort of um, uh, keep things going uh, forward, right? To keep the boat going where you want it to go. That's exactly what was going on for the disciples. They had just had this big experience of uh, uh, feeding 5,000 people and then uh, Jesus sort of sends them on their way and he goes uh, on uh, off to the mountains to pray. Uh, and um, they get stuck trying to row. And all night, they're trying to get this boat across this lake, but they're not able to do it. So when Jesus comes around the next morning, he goes and he walks on water to catch up with them. Right? He was going to pass them by, is what it seems like it, it was going to say uh, in the text. But you know, they, they see him and exclaim, and Jesus says, don't worry, it's me. Um, and then Peter has this moment where he wants to get out of the boat and walk on the water if to like prove that it's Jesus. And he gets distracted by the wind and he starts to sink. I mean, this is a this is a a, a, a quintessential story uh, that's you know this idea of Peter walking on the water. And um, you know, uh, it's important that we kind of understand um, that importance of the wind and Peter, right? Peter's takes the step out onto the water to have faith. Um, and uh, to do what Jesus is doing. But he gets distracted by just the topsy-turviness of the water and the wind and all that, when he really should just be focused on, um, on Jesus in front of him, you know, or maybe just keeping his feet on the top of the water. I don't know. But in some way, he's distracted, and his faith is shaken or something, and he starts to sink, and Jesus has to reach out and grab him and save him. Um, and he says to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? We all doubt all the time. 
In fact, sometimes we doubt so much that we put limits on ourselves. Granted, if we have faith, it says in Scripture, we can move mountains and all of that kind of stuff. But walking on water, moving mountains, uh, we have to sort of take it with a grain of salt. I mean, I, I think I have a pretty strong faith, <coughs> but I know I'm not going to... I know I'm not going to move any uh, uh, any mountains because of it. Um, I know I'm not going to walk on water because of my faith. Um, and that's okay, I guess. Kind of disappointing, isn't it? Then again, if we can't do the big things, let's think about the small things. Well, I can be faithful in my prayer life. I can be faithful in trying to serve others. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that I can I can do that... Uh, make my uh, faith more firm and that I can use my faith in helping others. So, um, but there are times even in those smaller things where I begin to doubt because we start to think about what our limitations are. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a hard one, right? Because our, our limitations are always right there for us to see. You know, and I think that what's really important in that is that we get our limitations uh, in check. There's a great, there's a great uh, uh, saying. It comes from Richard Bach. Uh, he wrote uh, in a book where it says, "Argue for your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours." Richard Bach is the guy who wrote uh, he wrote Illusions and Jonathan Livingston Siegel, um, and and so um, it's uh, uh, you know the subtitle for Illusions is the Adventures of a Reluctant Messiah. Um, has a lot more affinity with sort of Buddhist traditions than than Christian ones, uh, but uh, this. This idea of arguing for our limitations, and sure enough, they're yours, I think this is pretty important. Um, you know, we have um, to remember that God can help us do just about anything. It doesn't mean we should be unreasonable and be like, you know, trying to do, we're going to, you know, do something amazing like, uh, okay, we're going to get in the barrel and go over the falls because God's going to help me do it and I'm not going to think about my limitations. Yeah, that would be a bad idea, I would say, to do something like that. Don't you think? But, you know, what we could do is if we're thinking about our daily routines or our work or how we can be more kind to, fam kind to family or friends, like, <coughs> if we look at what the obstacles are, a lot of times that keeps us from getting to what the uh, point of things is or the solution or the place we need to get to. We're very good at thinking about the things that hold us back. In Matthew, in this, these passages in this Matthew, in chapter 14, you know, last week we talked about how the, the uh, 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 disciples were feeding these 5,000 people. Jesus was, you know, producing this food by miraculously and giving it to the disciples, and they gave it out. And at the start, they're like, we don't have enough. You know, they looked at the obstacle instead of the fact that they had Jesus with them to overcome all obstacles. Here, when they get in the boat, like they have the literal obstacle of trying to get uh, to the other side and having a real hard time um, doing that. And, and that's, you know, that's uh, something that's really difficult for the disciples to manage. So there's obstacles there and limitations. But the biggest limitation we see in the story is Peter walking on the water, right? It's an impossible thing. And when he starts to doubt, <coughs> when he starts focusing on his limitations, like, I'm just a guy, and I'm in the midst of this storm, what am I doing walking on the water? Yeah, he starts to focus on his limitations as opposed to the miracle to hand. I wish our miracles were as showy and flashy as that in our life, but I know that they are generally smaller. Each one of you has uh, blessings in your day that you're aware of, you know? My blessing today is my Keep It Hot Forever mug. Uh, I, 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 I love this mug. I couldn't find it for a while, right? I don't know why, but then it, it appeared in, my, in the cupboard. Um, I guess somebody must have had it in the room or something. Um, I'm glad to have it back because, like, this tea that I had in here, I made it, like, five this morning. It's still warm. It keeps stuff hot forever. So I'm happy about that blessing. Did God make it appear for me? Uh, I don't think God had anything to do about it. I know he wasn't praying about my cup, but I was happy to see it. We have to really be cognizant of all that God does for us, and we have to be aware of the work that God gives us to do. These are important things, and um, we need to not doubt so much. 
All right, and we need to not look at the obstacles, the things that prevent us uh, from making progress in our lives. As uh, uh, just generally as human beings or in progress in our faith or anything, we have to look out uh, for that way of thinking where uh, we get focused on what we can't do instead of what we can do. Focused on the impossible instead of how to achieve what's possible. Uh, focused on the roadblocks in the process as opposed to focusing on the goal and finding a way around or over the roadblocks. That's what faith is about. When Jesus you know, has, them, uh, has them come out on the water, has Peter come out on the water, you know, this is obstacles being overcome. And, and when he starts to falter in his thinking, God picks him up. And God saves him. This, this is pretty much what our life of faith is like without the drama of being walking on the water, I suppose. I guess this is all to say one thing, and one thing I want you to take away from um, this message and, and really try and apply it. It's that idea of limitations, to not be focused on your limitations. Peter didn't let himself focus on the limitation of, I can't walk on water. Uh, Peter uh, focused on Christ and wanting to be like and with him. And so he stepped outside the boat onto the surface of the sea. Walking on the water is uh, something we should not be able to do, but Peter did it. And when he did uh, wasn't focused on the obstacle, he did fine. But when he got distracted by the water and the sea and the whole thing, that's when he started to sink. When we start to sink in the things that we're pursuing, Jesus will be right there with us. God will lift us up and give us hope and give us a way forward. It's always there for us to see. We just have to not doubt. We have to make sure we understand that God walks with us and will always provide a path through. It might not be where we expected to end up. It might not be uh, exactly the thing we set out to, a uh, goal we, we set out to accomplish. Uh, it might be entirely different, just a little bit off. Uh, but God's always going to get us to some kind of solution when we rely on God to help us through it. God will give us what we need internally in our, in our mind and in our hearts and uh, externally from the world to uh, show us where those resources are that can help us to get to where we want to be. Don't just focus on your limitations. Peter did fine when he wasn't focused on his limitations, when he was being fully faithful. When he stopped, when he started arguing, in a sense, for his limitations, then they were his. Argue for your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours. As Christians, I think that this is something that we can uh, really take home. Don't focus on the limitations. Don't argue for them. Step out in faith and go where God's leading you. And when you falter, it's okay. Because it'll happen. God will be there to lift you up and help you back on to the path. So, sisters and brothers, give things a try. Don't be held back by fear. Don't be held back by anything do all things within the love of Christ and uh, within the certainty of salvation for yourself and for all people. Do everything, do everything with the certain knowledge that God walks with you and will carry you through those times to the goal that you need most.